morning, everyone. I'm Janet Pigeon. <laughs> and when Linda asked me if I would like to share about my favorite book in the Bible or my favorite verse, I didn't hesitate because it immediately came to mind. My favorite book, my favorite verse is in my favorite book, and my favorite book is Proverbs. I like it because it's common sense. It's uh, it's about uh, wisdom, but in a very practical way. It gives practical principles and priorities and and advice that you can easily understand. It's uh, it's written in uh, a way that you can absorb it. And my favorite go-to verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord thy God with all your heart and lean not unto your own, own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I don't know about the straight part, but he, the part in front of you, he makes straight. <laughs> well, every year I choose a word of the year. I pray about it until God... Uh, helps me narrow it down and gives me my word. When a word starts repeating in my mind or in things I see, then I know that's my word. So my word this year is trust. And it was also my word last year, but I felt God saying, I still need to learn my lesson. So it's my same word for this year. And I have it posted on with the verse on my door. I trust God, but sometimes I need to be reminded. I am learning more and more to trust God in all things, big and small. I've always been a warrior. Now I'm trying to be a prayer warrior instead. I can recall many examples from my life where a situation came up and instead of praying about it and asking for God's guidance, I spent many nights worrying and racking my brain for a solution, totally forgetting about God in, the, in that because I just dive in and, and work on it, work on it, work on it. A few examples are many years ago, a friend of mine um, had to get out. She has multiple sclerosis or had, she passed away now, but uh, had to move out of the place she was in because they were kicking everybody out so they could renovate the place. She was doing nothing about looking for a place. She was not packing. She just wasn't um, working on. So I was worrying for her. I was worrying, worrying, losing sleep, totally losing sleep over it and saying, you know, you got to do something, but she wasn't. Well, I finally realized and I stopped and I prayed while well, things started to happen. The place, um, I guess they had gone to the media. And so the place that was going to renovate, that was kicking them out, gave them a three months extension. In the meantime, I talked my friend into putting in an application here at my building because there's an elevator, which would be good for her. But there was no openings at the time, but an opening came up just when she needed it. She was able to move in, start moving in a week, uh, like the middle of the month before and it happened to be a disabled suite which would be easier for her because shortly after she was in a wheelchair on another occasion you notice the ones that stand out in my mind are the ones where i fought god and then finally surrendered and he took over it was my aunt and uncle's 50th anniversary in toronto and i'm from mississauga and I wanted to attend because I knew all the relatives would be there, my family and my relatives. And it just wasn't working out. I had a new boss. He said, no, I can't take time off right now. And just nothing, nothing was working out. I was so upset. I was so intense about going. And the day of the party, I phoned the hotel where they were and I was crying. I was all upset and I talked to my aunt and uncle. And then my sister came on and said, maybe you could come next month for our 25th anniversary, which I thought was the following year. And of course, I, I prayed about it. I stopped, I prayed about it and everything worked out. I got extra money, uh, like just everything worked out. And as it turned out, it was a weekend affair. I mean, I was there longer than a weekend, 
but we camped out at their place for the weekend. Everybody was there. We had such a good time. And the a biggie was when um, I fought God about when he asked me to go on a mission trip to Cofredia, Mexico, uh, to build a church. It was an adult, um, adult mission trip. And I had many reasons why I couldn't go, no money, my bad knee, so on. So I was fighting him, fighting him, but he kept pushing me. You could just sense it when he's pushing you to do something. So I finally thought, well, I'll get him off my back by going to the mission committee and telling them, I feel God calling me, but I can't go. And these are my reasons. Two weeks later, <laughs> two weeks later, they came to me and said, we prayed about it and we feel God wants you to be there. <laughs> okay. So I fought about it. I fought with them for another week. And I finally said, okay, God, you want me there, make it happen. And I said, by the way, I need to pay $500 deposit by tomorrow and I don't have it. So you got a miracle in your pocket? Well, <clears throat> the next day, some of you have heard the story. I uh, went to the mail and wasn't thinking about it at the time. And I took out a thing from my financial um, institution and I thought, this looks like a check. This is $500, I'm gonna faint. So I started to open it and I thought, no, I'm waiting till I go upstairs. So I opened it. It was $500. It was like, okay, <laughs> okay, God, I guess I'm going to Cofredia. <laughs> and the rest fell into place. Two weeks later, I had my passport because I hadn't even applied for it. And that was a miracle in itself. And everything went as planned, uh, no, better than planned. And it was just a life-changing trip for me. So these days, well, since then, if I forget and try to do something without consulting him, I tell myself, stop, pray, and listen. I find I'm much more tuned into God now. And if I have a situ situation or a decision to make, I sit and wait on the Lord. And if I don't get a clear direction or even a nudge in a certain direction, I sit and wait some more. And it's I'm becoming more confident in that because there's times where like, I'm supposed to be baking for this event tomorrow and I'm not doing anything, what's wrong with me? And then later I get a call saying, sorry, we have to cancel the event, the whatever, whatever reason. So I'm getting to trust more and more. Um, about, you know, uh, things that are, well, big and small, like commonplace things. But somebody said in our group here about praying every morning for God's direction for the day. And I've got to start doing that because I forget to do it. I do it later once I'm doing my devotions, but. So in my research, I found out that the word trust is mentioned 137 times in the Old Testament. And uh, I also discovered that a lot of times, depending on the translation, it, believe, it means believe me, which I really like. Fear not is in the Bible 365 times, one for each day. I found that interesting. We're all prone to worry about with from one degree to another and if you remember the song don't worry be happy the singer says that same phrase don't worry be happy more than 20 times in one song and it won awards and sold millions of songs so it must have struck a chord we all have a tendency to be anxious and worried over issues of life god knows this it makes me feel less guilty knowing that God expects me to worry and get anxious. But it also made me realize that I, although I can't control it myself, I can give it over to God. As I often remind myself, just let go and let God. I have other uh, verses I go to um, for reinforcement like Jeremiah 29, 11 and Philippians 4, um, and there's probably others, but those are my main go-to ones. And it's just to remind me that 
it's okay. God's got this. Don't worry. Be happy.